All right, so as you can probably tell by the thumbnail and the title of this video, today we're building a chain drive differential. Now this is for our four x four lawnmower build. If you guys have not seen that, definitely go check it out at the link above. I've had this idea for a couple of years now. Um, I did actually see this done uh, online a couple of years ago on a picture um, and it looked quite cool. So what we're gonna do is we're using this VY Commodore differential. Now these are everywhere here in Australia. Um, you can get these quite quite commonly. Um, this is an open differential. We, I don't think you can use a LSD. I don't think that works. So this is an open diff. Um, it's quite small, it's compact, um, and it has these nice flanges here, the flat flanges that we can bolt our CV shafts to. So yeah, we'll be machining down this uh, 42 tooth sprocket so we can go straight down on there. We'll make up a nice little cup to hold all the grease in, and hopefully we can squeeze it in that lawnmower frame. All right, so first thing we need to do is remove these bearings. Now I did try this with a press, but our tool just would not get underneath. So I've got this little three-legged uh, remover here. All right, so that's actually just bending the cage and its bearing. So I'm gonna have to tack well the cage to the actual cone of the bearing. Um, and only one foot is actually making contact underneath on the cone. So I have to do it on two sides. Hopefully we can get this bugger off. All right, it's almost an hour later and all these tools here and we finally have both bearings off. Now this side was really easy. It just welded to the race and it came straight off. Um, so I cut all the cage off both sides. Yeah, welded to the race of that one. It fell off. Um, as you can see, very crude tool here. Uh, don't mind that uh, welding. It's, I just wanted the damn thing off in the end because this side uh, is blind. You can't actually get in there because of obviously where the uh, ring gear bolts on. So I would highly recommend taking this to a shop that actually does this, save you time and save you money on tools. Anyway, so I ended up heating it up and I was able to pull it off and then tap it off the rest of the way. Now you have gotta be careful you don't damage your shaft either because we still need that nice and smooth polished shaft. So now we can uh, pull these bolts out and clean this thing up and uh, I'll get onto lathing up that sprocket. Okay, so while we wait for that sprocket ink to dry, um, we do have to make up the housing first so we can actually put our sprocket on and make that a tight fit over the housing um, because that will be going all the way down to the bottom. So what I've chosen here is an oil filter. Um, this is pretty damn close. That's the part number there for this one. Uh, so what we're gonna do is sand off this ring here and that should hopefully slide down and cover all the way down. So then we can cut a little hole at the top and our uh, bearing can come poke through. I do not have the proper tools to be doing this type of cut. Um, this is a part off, I need like a part off tool uh, to be able to do that properly. But anyway, I've had to V this out a fair bit and cut it off. So now I have to chuck this in and we'll have to square it all up so it'll fit over onto that differential. But it's not too bad for uh, sort of having a crack anyway.
parts are now. I've got all of our holes drilled in our sprocket and taps um, to the correct size, which is M12 by 1.75 for our application. We can install the sprocket down on here. Now I'm going to use a little bit of Loctite on these threads. Alright, so my cover goes on there pretty good. Now it slightly catches on the bolts down the bottom. Um, so what I'm going to have to do is just try and get it centre and then put some RTV on it. It's only going to hold the grease in so it doesn't really matter. Um, and the top bearing will hold it in place. Now trying to sand that actual ring. It, it had a perfect ring on the top. I was going to try and sand it and just push it straight out. But that didn't work. This stuff's so thin it just sort of heated up and warped in. So I had to sort of drill it out and uh, try and sand it out. Anyway, same thing on the top. That'll be uh, rtv anyway, and there'll be the bearing over the top, so it won't matter too much. So yeah, um, we can, I want to paint this thing up black so it just doesn't stand out with the old Rocco on there. We can put our bearings on and we should be all good. Why do bugs always want to land in my paint and make a mess, you little bugger. It's that sketchy, I'm almost proud of it. Um, so what we're doing here is machining down the bearing surface. This is 45.5 mil and our bearings are exactly 45 mil inside. So we're just going to machine 0.5 off this. I have tried emery tape, but I'll be there for days. Now I've tightened this up tight enough that our spider gears don't move so we don't wear them out. Alright, so we machined off the tone ring off these. Uh, that was for the vehicle speed uh, pickup sensor. They had a sensor mounted up on the diff on the outside, um, so we didn't need that. A little bit of weight reduction and it looks much nicer. So, what we're going to do is finally assemble this thing. So, I'm going to put some o ring seals on the shaft here so when it goes down and in, we don't have any grease come back out and uh, spray everywhere. So, I'll put a couple of o rings on and then I'll make up a little uh, fabric seal here, so I'll just wrap up some some of this rag, wrap it around the shaft on the uh, on this side, and put a little bit of MIG wire around just to stop any extra coming out because we don't want this uh, leaking any grease. Put a little bit of sealer on these little locating dowels so it doesn't leak out of there as well.
All right, so there you have it, guys. A fairly simple way of building a train drive differential. Now, I've just sat it in the lawnmower here. I just mocked it up just so you guys can see roughly what we're going to do. So we'll run our chain to a jack shaft in the center. We'll put brake calipers on each side so we can stop each wheel. And we can connect our CV shaft from our flange here down to our hub. Yeah, guys, that's going to be it for today's video. Thank you guys for watching. If you guys liked the video, definitely give it a thumbs up and share it around. And if you're new to the channel, make sure you guys subscribe so you don't miss out on cool builds like this. I'll catch you guys in the next one.